Good morning. My name is Val Melismone, and I'm with the Office of the Auditor General. We're here today to share findings of three separate investigations by three independent offices of the Legislative Assembly of Alberta into the activities of the Alberta Energy Regulator and the International Centre of Regulatory Excellence. This is the first time that three independent officers of the Assembly have conducted investigations under respect of their respective mandates stemming from both whistleblower and public complaints. While the three investigations were completely independent of one another, all three officers deemed it in the best interests of both Albertans and all parties involved to release their respective reports at the same time. I would like to introduce, starting from left to right, Alberta Ethics Commissioner, the Honorable Marguerite Tressler, Alberta Public Interest Commissioner, Ms. Marianne Ryan, and Mr. Doug Wiley, the Auditor General of Alberta. The officers will now make their individual statements related to their respective investigations, beginning with the Alberta Ethics Commissioner. Thank you. In October of last year, I was asked by the Office of the Public Interest Commissioner to investigate if Jim Ellis, CEO of the Alberta Energy Regulator, had breached the provisions of the Conflicts of Interest Act. Mr. Ellis had become subject to the Act in December of 2017. At the same time, I received anonymous information alleging that Mr. Ellis was acting in a manner detrimental to the Alberta Energy Regulator and was furthering his own private interests. Given that the communication was anonymous, I was not able to investigate Mr. Ellis under the Conflicts of Interest Act, but I was able to do an investigation under the Code of Conduct of the Alberta Energy Regulator which allowed for an investigation back to the beginning of i -Corps. The Public Interest Commissioner was very helpful in providing documents, cell phone, emails, cell phone emails, and texts. The texts in particular give a very clear picture of wrongdoing. Basically, under both investigations, I found Mr. Ellis was in a conflict of interest and that while he was at the Alberta Energy Regulator, he furthered his own interests and improperly furthered the interests of three other employees. I found that the primary motivation behind i Energy Services NFP was to create future employment for himself and others. He breached both the Conflicts of Interest Act and the Alberta Ener Energy Regulator Code of Conduct. I made no recommendations with respect to Mr. Ellis as he had resigned by the time I finished my investigations. I did recommend an investigation under the AER Code of Conduct of several AER employees who appeared to be involved with Mr. Ellis in his activities. While not in my report, I found a culture at the senior management le level at the Alberta Energy Regulator that promoted a wrongful manipulation and omission of facts designed to mislead both the board and the government. I found those actions designed to mislead both troubling and unacceptable. It still needs to be ascertained if that culture still exists. If Mr. Ellis had not resigned prior to the completion of my report, I would have recommended that he be terminated. Thank you. Ms. Ryan. Good morning. My comments today confirm whistleblower protection legislation provides public servants with an effective mechanism they may access to ensure government maintains the highest possible standards of honesty, openness, and accountability. The Public Interest Disclosure Whistleblower Protection Act creates a confidential avenue for public servants in Alberta to speak out about wrongdoings or make complaints of reprisal. In June of 2018, an employee with the Alberta Energy Regulator contacted my office to report what they believed to be serious wrongdoing occurring within the AER. Based on the information provided in the disclosure by this employee, my office commenced an extensive investigation. This investigation identified serious and significant wrongdoings committed within the AER through the establishment of the International Center of Regulatory Excellence, generally referred to as i -Corps. Early on in our investigation, it became apparent to our investigators that other offices of the Legislative Assembly 
may also want to have a closer look at the AER. Early evidence called into question a potential conflict of interest with the CEO and president of AER, and as a result, I met with the Ethics Commissioner to advise her of my concerns. Based on the information I was able to provide to the Ethics Commissioner, she indicated she would consider commencing her own investigation with respect to the conflict of interest. The investigation conducted by my office into the actions of the former AER President and Chief Executive Officer Jim Ellis is now complete. My office interviewed executives and employees of the AER and analyzed over 5,700 records in addition to thousands of electronic communications regarding i -Corps. The investigation found that Mr. Ellis was the architect and final decision maker in all aspects of the creation and implementation of i -Corps. Initially, i -Corps was promoted as a means to achieve regulatory excellence through training, innovation, and the exchange of regulatory best practices. However, the substantial AER financial and human resources which were utilized to establish and operate i -Corps were clearly outside the mandate and powers afforded by the AER's governing legislation. Mr. A Mr. Ellis's actions were deliberate and demonstrated a reckless and willful disregard for the proper management of public funds, public assets, the delivery of a public service, and of employees. In the language of the Act, Mr. Ellis's gross mismanagement as President and CEO of the AER amounted to wrongdoings. Mr. Ellis is no longer employed with the AER. This report is not a condemnation of the AER as a whole. It was employees of the AER who brought this matter to my attention and assisted with the investigation. They did so in the public interest and for the betterment of the AER. I strongly encourage employees of the public service to use my office and the protection provisions afforded by the Public Interest Disclosure Whistleblower Protection Act as the primary mechanism to report wrongdoing. I can also advise that the actual whistleblower in this case remains anonymous and no action has been taken against them. Several employees of the AER, including the whistleblower, sought to bring this matter to light and are commended for their integrity and for acting in the public interest. I would also like to express my appreciation to our public interest disclosure team for all of their hard work and dedication. Thank you. Mr. Wiley. Good morning. In August of 2018, my office received a complaint from a member of the public. The complaint alleged a number of serious concerns relating to the establishment of the International Center of Regulatory Excellence, also known as i -Corps at the Alberta at AER. After completing our due diligence, we determined that the allegations warranted examination. Today, our report, an examination of the International Center of Regulatory Excellence is being made public. Our examination focused on assessing the effectiveness of AER controls and processes to mitigate risks associated with i -Corps activities. The objective of our examination was multifaceted. Perhaps most important, the most important aspect was to make recommendations for improvement that will assist AER in the future and to communicate lessons learned that will also be of benefit to other board governed organizations in the public sector. This examination was unusual. For example, it is unusual for us to use text messages as evidence. We expect organizations to conduct business through formal means resulting in permanent corporate records. In this case, much of the actual business was conducted over text messages and email accounts outside AER. And it is also unusual for us to compel witnesses to testify under oath as we did in this examination. So now let me turn to the results of our examination. As originally conceived, the Center of Regulatory Excellence, or CORE, was an AER-focused training program that aligned with AER's strategic directions and goals. However, through a combination of actions, deficient controls, and poor implementation, control was allowed to morph into i -Corps. 
an initiative extending beyond the boundaries of Alberta. i focused on generating revenue from countries around the world through the delivery of services. Various work plans identified business development activities for the following. Mexico, Ukraine, the US, United Kingdom, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Guyana, Jamaica, Mongolia, India, Pakistan, Uganda, and Ethiopia, just to name a few. An immediate focus of i activities was delivering training to Mexico. i related activities at AER provide a case study of how public money can be wasted and harm can befall an organization when controls and, organi and, and processes are ineffective. Key findings from our examination are, first, AER in engaged in activities outside of its mandate and public money was wasted on i -Corps. Second, controls and processes to protect against potential conflicts of interest were ineffective. Third, AER board oversight was ineffective. The board's competency matrix demonstra demonstrated it was not at full complement, resulting in a shortage of required skill sets. Fourth, financial, information management, and human resource controls were ineffective. Fifth, controls to monitor and track expenses related to i activities were at first non-existent and then poorly implemented. These process weaknesses contributed to the waste of public money. We estimate $5.4 million was spent on i activities. And finally, the tone at the top at AER did not support a strong control environment and compliance with policies. We make four recommendations to AER. First, we recommend that the board improve its oversight processes. Second, we recommend that AER perform sufficient due diligence to assess the risk of further waste of public resources not already identified. Third, we recommend AER evaluate whether additional funds expended on i activities are recoverable. As previously mentioned, we estimate $5.4 million was spent on i -Corps. Of this, AER recovered $3.1 million. And finally, we recommend AER staff are made aware of and are sufficiently trained on recent enhancements to the board's whistleblowing process. There are important lessons to be learned for all public sector organizations from this examination. First, a healthy corporate culture, including tone at the top, matters above all else. A healthy corporate culture is paramount to ensure organizations remain focused on their mandate. Accurately gauging corporate culture is not easy, but boards and management must find ways to obtain assurance that their organizations are operating in a safe, respectful, and productive manner. Senior management and boards also need to set the tone for a strong control environment and compliance with policies. Second, directors need to be vigilant and ask probing questions of management, particularly when new risks to organizations emerge. Directors routinely walk into a boardroom possessing less information about the organization than management has. They may therefore be inclined to defer to management. However, each member of the board must be vigilant. CEOs wield significant power within an organization. Boards need to establish processes to engage with staff beyond the C-suite to obtain a broader perspective of activities within their organization. Third, in pursuing new and innovative concepts, government organizations need to ensure new activities are an appropriate fit within their mandate. The external environment tends to change much, much faster than governing legislation, and as government organizations seek to introduce innovation, it is important that, they, that new activities are within their mandate. AER's mandate is to regulate the energy industry within the province of Alberta. The original concept of, of CORE to develop AER staff pr proficiencies was arguably within its mandate. However, the development of i -Corps and the diversion of resources to build an organization focused on the international stage was not. And finally, effective whistleblowing mechanisms are critical in uncovering undesired practices. The events at AER further reinforce the importance 
of whistleblowing processes to surface problematic activities within an organization. Organizations need to ensure that staff are aware of whistleblowing processes and that internal processes are viewed as safe, secure, and reliable. That concludes my opening comments, but I also want to thank the team that worked on this project um, uh, for their hard and diligent work. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. This now concludes the statements and the public portion of this news conference. The Ethics Commissioner's uh, two reports are available on the a, uh, Alberta Energy Regulator and Government of Alberta websites, respectively. The Public Interest Commissioner's report is available at www.yourvoiceprotected.ca, and the Auditor General's report is available at www.oag.ab.ca. Thank you.